now, now that my hand is moisturized, I think um, I'm gonna continue. December 27th, 1.22 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. He's back. Hi, I'm back. That's alright. I'm gonna have sushi later. It's not fancy sushi, but it's gonna be something. Yay, Nick! You did it! Yeah... Well, at least we got out from under the guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else! Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out! Sure... Once I sift through his... Once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. Lucky, lucky, yep. Yeah. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Did, did you say something? Don't look so pain. I mean, it looks like you're probably gonna get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. I'm sorry. But... I fear it's not over for me yet. What? What did you mean? Right? There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Well, just tell me, goddammit! Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you, to get it off my chest, but... <clears throat> I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's... A nightmare I've had. Damn. A memory of a crime that I committed. <gasps> a crime you committed? A memory of a murder. <gasps> Excuse me, you don't just paste a to be continued here. I need answers. Answers, guys. Jesus Christ, it's been almost six hours. God. Yes, of course. After all, I've been through a bit of like. Oh, yes, yes. Oh my gosh! Okay, I'm gonna see this through, okay? Like, I know dinner's coming in like an hour or so, but like, I'm gonna see this through. I don't care. I'm gonna see this through. Off we go. Okay. <sighs> Alright. December 27th, 2.11pm, Wright and Co. Law Offices. What was Mr. H for talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. Do you really think Mr. H was killed? I don't believe it. Not H worth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'll never take someone's life, never! Nick! Yo! How's everyone doing? Oh my gosh, my man boots! What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? Was this a swooning? Me? Uh oh, yes, I do remember feeling faint. Right on, tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Uh huh, me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you can do better than that. Come on, I said it was in there, dude. Itchy. You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. Uh, guess so? Let's talk about it then. Larry, you really helped out in a trial today. You did? 
If it weren't that, Larry, I'm sure the Zedros would have been found guilty. Ha! Ha 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 But seriously, Nick. That full chop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But AJ ain't off the hook yet. Way to spy the moon, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty... Edgy. Oh my god, you made the pun! You made the stupid pun! <laughs> I mean... Can you really know the truth? Can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But... What I do know is... I'm going to believe in you too until the end. <gasps> Us too? Edgeworth and... Who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me! Right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. <laughs> Not me! <laughs> oh, I got poor Maya. But, but why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? Hmm, <laughs> enough of the silent treatment. Okay, let's talk. Edgeworth. Okay, let's talk about this. Nick. Why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me, Miles. And Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. <gasps> That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey, hey, Larry. What you talking about? Huh? Uh, um, yeah. Uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. <sighs> okay, Nick, out with it. I'm gonna hear your story today and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of first of third grade. Oh god, we're in for a long time. I was on trial. A class trial. What's this, Danganronpa? <laughs> a c class trial? You remember, Larry? Spring, end of third grade? A kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Huh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared, with $38 still inside. <gasps> oh, yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you forget, though. We were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down with a cold, so I skipped PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So... they thought you did it? Yeah, the kids in class said I should be put on trial. What kind of school is this? What kind of kids are you raising? Like, a trial just for this? Trial? So the next day, we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant. Oh my god! <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> I... I didn't do it! Guilty! He did it! Guilty was you! <laughs> Just admit you said you can't hide the truth. Tell us the truth. We're not gonna play with you anymore. Yeah, no bar my eraser. You shouldn't be allowed in the relay room. <laughs> Oh, man. Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought, I've done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. Hi. I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad. I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. He 
shouldn't have to apologize. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> the only thing that belongs in the trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed. Amateurs. M Miles? <gasps> it wasn't you who stole my money, was it? <gasps> N no. Then you shouldn't apologize. <gasps> Tell him. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. <laughs> At this age, he was already. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. They can say sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? This is always how it is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Oh, such a sweet story. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. Ah! Weird teacher, I know, right? What a weird teacher. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone, without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So I took it kind of personally, you see. <laughs> when something smells, it's usually the boots. Jesus Christ. Okay, after the trial, I want to know what happened. Okay. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney, just like my father. A famous defense attorney. Then, a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. <gasps> Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought too. I tried to get in touch with him I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it though. I wanted to meet him to learn why he had become who he became. That's when I decided. Oh! <gasps> Wait, you don't mean? That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? Oh my god! Holy shit, what is this? Oh. I was just joking about the USD. I didn't mean it. Oh my god, this damn game! Ah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bromance, perfect dog. Yeah, exactly. What kind of romance is this? Hello? This is too much even for me. Ah! Oh my god. <laughs> I 
If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me, whether he wanted to or not. Ah, oh, this guy! In court. It's, I know it's supposed to sound really inspiring, but all I can think of is just how bromance this sounds. <laughs> Edgeworth believed in me, and I believed in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Ah, more romance, you all. More romance. Whoa, Nick. So, so is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'll do it for free. <laughs> oh, Nick, Nick. Nick. We have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very well may be. First, there's a rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'll sell for who. <laughs> I guess I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. Okay, um... There is nothing else I can talk about with Light Larry, so let's like move. Um... Can we go to the detention center? Ah, yes. More romance. December 27, detention center. Visitor's room. You look as grim as always. Hold on. Let me just take a look. Yeah. Looks grim as always. Huh. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? Y you don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In third grade? Lunch money? Oh, oh, right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. <laughs> Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but... I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. We need to talk, though. Hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor, anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right? But I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes. The man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was? Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter. Any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in the elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in the elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yogi had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. That's when I changed my mind. 
I started to hate defense attorneys. Damn. I want to know about Von Karma. Come on. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent. Ever. But... but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it's impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job to find the suspect guilty. Perfectly. In any case, it's not well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow! <gasps> he, he's right! Now's the time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth! Hmm. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Though there's nothing much we can do though. Like Can we can we ask about this? Yeah, Nick, no! That's a photo of his fire. Don't show him that! <laughs> I'm terrible. Nothing. Huh? <laughs> I'm terrible at this. Um Yeah. I feel like we need to ask a bit more. It was the case that changed my life. And tomorrow on December 28th, the Statute of Limitations runs out. Tomorrow. Could that be a coincidence? But, even if the case is finally closed on paper, it will never be erased from my memory. Never. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. can do here? Hmm. Okay... Hmm, no sense Detective Gumshoe hasn't gone back yet. Gumshoe? He won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. The boot shop caretaker. He shouted something about catching him if it's the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. Okay, I guess we'll be headed to the guard area as well. Hey pal, long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshu. Close one today, eh? I got to work up us and my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> no problem, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boot shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Now, I'm off to catch me a criminal. Goodbye, sir. Wow. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one other thing. Beep! No one can go into the woods today. The woods? Where a lot of us camping? The woods are off limits to camping, and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. I guess Lada's in a lot of trouble. Oh my god. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Uh, well, we can't go in, so... Huh? The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. 
Let's see, is there anything that is out of place here? I, I feel like there's nothing. I mean, everything that happened in your childhood will be alive. Gordy was lying and charges again. I mean, I gotta charge all life, but still. Damn. I don't think there's anything that we can find, though. Let's see, we are back. Okay, see you. Let's go to the boat rental shop and like see if we can find anything. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. <laughs> I don't know that clearing of the throat anywhere is it, our man Grossberg. There he is. <laughs> Hello, what might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, oh, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Crossbird! This is no time for idle reminiscing! Mr. Hedro's trial ends tomorrow! Uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Hedro should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, oh, what did you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? Is there anything we can check? Like... So run for the hills, huh? Yeah, it looks like it. He didn't seem like a bad person. Mm, I don't think there's anything else to see here. Okay, yeah. Move. Um. Oh, Polly's still here! December 27, Karatika's check. Nobody's home. Car? Hey, it's Polly! I wonder where your oldest gone, Polly. Hello? Hello? Car? I can't believe he'll run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello? Hello? Car? Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick? Yeah, I probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great, now the bird's gonna take me. Okay, there's... Is there anything else? Like... Ah! Well, what's wrong? Huh? Oh, n never mind. What? Tell me! Just when I saw the TV, I remembered. They're showing... Pink Princess special this week. Oh my gosh! Ah! Everything's cold. Looks like he didn't turn his heater on. I guess he hasn't been back here since the trial. I mean, it does feel like he used this kitchen much. You're right. I guess the whole pasta restaurant thing was a lie. What? You thought he was telling the truth? <laughs> Okay, I think that's it. I mean, Nick, don't you really put pictures of fish up on the wall to boast about them? Uh, yeah, I guess. You mean pictures of the fish they caught, right? Right, but don't all the fish on the wall here look really puny to you. Well, you know what they say. You should have seen the one that got away. Except the one that got away from us was the caretaker, and we did see him. Why do I feel like we're having two different conversations here? Okay, um... Move. I don't think we can go anywhere. I think we have to go to like... Hmm... Okay... Let's go to the Grossbird Law Offices, like... Hopefully there's something for us. He's out again. When does he work anyway? Now, now, don't be harsh. Guess we'll have to come back later. Um... 
Is there anything I can like talk to him about? Okay, we talk to him about stuff. Um. Hmm. Oh man, how about we're dead? Oh man, I'm so... Ah. Mm -hmm. Am I missing something? Right, like even here I talk to him on everything, okay. Oh man, I miss my miss my homie Lada. Let's go. Okay. Actually examine everything. Wait. Oh wait, 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 no, no, no. We finished this one. Wait. It's a gun! Wait, no, it's a fishing pole, sorry. That fishing pole looks expensive. Um maybe we should bring it to Detective Gumshoe. Don't you think the caretaker will mind? Well, we can't just leave in the metal detector in exchange. Uh maybe we will better not. Right. Polly was the number to say. One, two, three, right? four. Let's open it, Nick. Come on. Oh, ghosty lazy. Thanks for the um self care redeems. <sighs> oh, it's the it's the oh dreading. Ah, it's just. And I'm drinking water. Check done. Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Oh, but hey, he gets a lot, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick. Let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue too. The only thing in here is a letter. Oh, <gasps> a letter. Aw, oh, boring! Hmm, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Oh, <gasps> wait. <What>? Edgeworth! <gasps> N -n Nick! Why won't Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth? Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on both firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for the caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for sure, for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Okay. Okay. Wait, is there anything else? There's nothing left in the safe. I wonder why the caretaker didn't take the letter with him. He left in a hurry, right? I don't think he even came back here after the trial. Okay, um... 
Okay, I think we gotta like ask um we gotta ask our boy Miles about this stuff. Please, sir. Please tell us what it is. Edgeworth, see this letter. Hmm? This came out of the safe in the shack where that boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Hmm. Revenge on me? Who is that old guy anyway? I I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. <clears throat> so he was following this letter then? Oh boy. <clears throat> Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. <gasps> <clears throat> Two men, meaning myself and Robert Hammond. Elsa says, this is your last chance. Last chance? Wait, maybe... Maybe he's talking about the Statue of Limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. Wh what is it? Do you know who he is? Kyogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Dude, you must tell me more about this. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at that time. We just happened to be in that elevator together 15 years ago. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long, it felt like forever. The air thinned, and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I say quiet! You're not making this any easier! Don't shout! You just use some more oxygen! That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in the hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. Huh, but isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. But okay, anyway. <laughs> I didn't know whether or not I should tell you about the USD. <laughs> you mean the nightmare? Oh. What nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. Oh boy, oh boy. Memory of a crime that did not commit. Okay, I think we read through this. The memory of a murder. Oh. Okay, I think... I think the time has come to tell all. Tell us about the nightmare then. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat. Every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. Help! I can't breathe! 
quiet. I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out. Help, get us out. Don't shout. You just use some more oxygen. I... I can't breathe. You're using up my air. What? Stop breathing my air. I'll, I'll stop you. Oh, what? what? Where are you? Stop breathing my air! Oh my gosh. No, father! He's attacking father! Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from that day in court or the bailiffs. In a daze, I pick up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my father! Ah! <gasps> and with that scream, I wake. It's a bone chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. But, but that's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that's kept me sane for the last 15 years. Wait, what? Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me see my plot. I'm so sorry. Uh, that's because, um... There, there is a link. Yeah. It detected it's a link. Yeah. There are actually links. Wait. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yuki was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, you, you mean? It was me. I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there is anything we can do. Like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe... <gasps> there is, Nick! There is someone else who knows about DL6. Our reply goes bird, let's go. Grossbird law office says, Met Mr. Grossbird. Ah, uh, hello there. What's wrong? You look trouble. No kidding. I can't believe you're not. M -m -m my. Just calm down and tell me what's happened. Hmm? It's M -m Mr. Edward. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So, it was dreamt he shot his own father? It it's all only a dream, only a dream! I wonder. But what? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled, hmm? But well... Also, consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep, he'll want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise... That Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream, it was real. As you imagine... Miles Edgeworth drew the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired... And the deed was done. No! I don't believe it! Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irrevocably wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the statute of limitations so close. Wait, but like... We need to talk more. What do you know about Edgeworth's father? He 
I was the defense attorney with up here. It sounds right, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fei. Oh. My sister? Gregory Edwards was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result, he has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call his attention. To try to call attention to his methods. And? He lost. And died in despair, as it were. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on the spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Faye. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. <gasps> the one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Ah. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it... It seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Oh. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But, a possibility nonetheless. Oh my god. What do we do now? Alright. Oh ho, so this is the letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter. When he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney. But he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before. A long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Is it maybe Manfred von Karma? <gasps> Is it? Hmm, could it be Manfred von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. Oh no. Hmm? Von Karma, von Karma. Wait, wait! You're right, my boy! <gasps> oh my gosh! This is Von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it! Ah, me, Tofo! I used to see you all the time in court reports. What? Huh? What that means? That the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill us? Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. Oh! <gasps> What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Oh my god... Why? Why would he do that?
Gregory Edgeworth? What was a gifted man? His death was truly a loss. I wonder what would have become of Von Karma were he alive. Um, okay, let's see. Um, the prosecutor Von Karma, we need to know. If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll... he'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. Oh my god, what the hell? Von Karma! He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no! But, but how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like this? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm... That... I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. We need to know what happened. What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict. He wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow! It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation, you say? A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecution. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe! You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. Oh, if he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Von Karma is going to bring up DL6, you can bet on it! What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him! Uh, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. I know that! I... I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. <gasps> My man! I can't believe he'll kill someone! But Nick! Mr. Edgeworth himself admitted himself! His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright. If you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg. Thank you! I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. The police materials, hmm. Well, we could, like... We could talk to, like... We could talk to, like, the police. One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going. December 27, Police Department, Criminal Affairs. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Are we were wondering if you could check out the records room again? Well, now, I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. You can go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? 
Yes, we just arrived, actually. Boom Karma's in the records room. Nick, let's hurry. Go, go, go. We gotta go. We gotta go fast game. Let's go. December 27, let's go. Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they have just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma. This cabinet is where they keep evidence for current cases. Some of the things are obviously murder weapons. Others are question marks. Most of it just looks like random junk. Nick, what do you think this clothes pin is for? Don't touch that, it's evidence. Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking at it recently. The label says unsolved cases evidence. Hmm, unsolved cases? Nick! The Fafo DL6 is completely empty! <gasps> what? What are you doing in here? You. How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What? what are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edward's defense team. Defense team? Ahem, I beg your pardon. You see, I really remember defense attorneys. They're like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. We need to talk to you, sir. Uh um. Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? A romanticist who still can't shed the veneer of amateurism. Just like his father. Always second rate. Mr. Von Karma. You had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? I got you against a mere defense attorney. Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record. Huh. So you did. But what I don't get is... Why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. Your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. We were right. So Von Karma is going to bring up DL6 in court tomorrow. Can we present stuff to him like legit? This one? <laughs> Oh, you think I am persecuted? We'll give you a defense attorney information. Ha! Creep! What about this? Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. <gasps> oh my god. So, so, so you admit it. You, you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. Oh, you saved me from a lot of needless hassle. What? Sun gun for self defense, usually. <gasps> oh no! Indeed! 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000. 
Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it usually. <gasps> now, give me the leather. No. No. What? What are you? Nick, run! Ah! Oh no! M Maya! Out of my way! Ah! Oh no! Uh, he got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence, all of it. Back to having no clues. Wait. Maya jumped first. Maya! Is she okay? Ma Maya! Maya, open your eyes! Maya! The letter! Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, are you okay? I... I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but... One shot from the thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer. Or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now. We need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. No, Maya, no! Maya! Her. There has to be some way I can help her. I better do something about self-confidence first. Maya! She's holding something. What is that? A bullet? DL6 incident. Evidence number 7. Taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. DL6 bullet stashed in the pocket. <gasps> I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. <gasps> oh my god. 